Okay, so I think we can start. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, course on machine learning. Uh, the course number is INF8953CE, and this is a new course at Poly. Um, I'm Sarath Chander, I'm your instructor, and this course is, a, is an English course. Uh, however, you can submit your assignments and homeworks uh, in French as well, like if you prefer. Uh, and we have French TAs like who should be able to answer your questions in French. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so once again, like I'm Sarat, like I'm your instructor. And uh, for this course, like we also have uh, four TAs like who will be helping me in running the course. Uh, so we will actually have like one TA joining every lecture who will also help me in uh, organizing the questions that you guys are asking uh, in the chat. Um, so I will slowly introduce them in every lecture. So for this lecture, we actually have Abdul with us. Uh, hi, Abdul. Uh, okay, I think you're muted. So just to show your video to I'm others. Saying hi. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so and other than Abdul, like we also have Sharon, um, Lawrence, and Remy. So you will see them uh, in the future lectures, and you will also see them in their office hours. Uh, okay, so we will start with a bit of administrative announcements on how the course is going to be organized for this semester. Um, so this is the first time, like. I think everyone is trying online course. Like, so there are obviously challenges with respect to teaching online, uh, but we will try our best to make it a seamless experience for you. Okay, so all the course details are available in the course website, uh, which the link for which is already available in the Moodle. Um, the schedule for the course will also be in the public website. Uh, the link is given here and it is also available from Moodle. Uh, we will be regularly updating the schedule um, with the future lectures and lecture notes. Okay, uh, so before we begin the lecture, uh, like I would like to uh, inform you uh, that these lectures are going to be recorded and they will also be released. Uh, as the course website says, like by registering for this course, you agree for the recording and release of the YouTube lecture, like the, of the lecture videos. Um, if you don't want your, like your faces will not be visible in the lectures, uh, but when you ask a question, like your faces will be visible. Uh, so if you prefer that your face should not be visible, uh, then you can like mute your video, like turn off your video while you're asking questions. And if you want to be even more secure and you don't want um, even your audio, then you could ask your questions in the chat and the TAs are going to ask the question on behalf of you without your name. So, uh, so you have multiple options to interact uh, if you don't want to interact in a way that uh, you will be visible. Okay, so what is this course about? So I'm sure like all of you are excited to learn about machine learning. So this course is actually an introductory course in machine learning which will cover the fundamental topics in supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Uh, is this, like before we begin, like uh, I want all of you to, like I, I know that you have to choose your courses by September 14th, so, so this slide will help you for that. Like this is the right course for you. So this is a new course and this is meant to be the first course in machine learning for the following category of students. So for undergraduates who want to pursue AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning in their grad school. And for graduate students who wish to do fundamental research in machine learning, for graduate students who want to apply machine learning in their respective research areas, and for engineers who will build machine learning solutions. So I'm also, I also have plans to try polling in between the lectures. So we are going to start the trial with this slide. So you should see a poll now and I request you to choose which category you belong to. Uh, so just for me to get an idea of like what is the distribution of student motivation uh, in this course. 
So you should see the poll in your screens. So I will end the polling when all of you vote. Okay, we are almost there. Okay, so I will be ending the poll in few seconds. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Sarah, but like uh, there are two questions. There was some person asking for whether or not the labs are mandatory to attend because we will come to that. No, we will come to that. Okay. And someone okay. is also, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I think we will stop the poll and I can actually share the results. Um, okay, so it's interesting, like we see reasonable amount of students in all the four categories. Um, so this poll will also help me to tailor the course as we move along. Uh, also, like now that you have learned how to participate in these polls, like so we will have some questions in between uh, where I would uh, ask you to answer the questions through poll um, so that we can try to simulate uh, the interactions that we would have in a physical classroom. Okay, um, that is good. I'm not sure if this will be recorded, so I'm going to take a picture of this. Okay, uh, okay so moving forward, um, there are uh, certain prerequisites for this course, which are already uh, mentioned uh, in the course outline. Uh, so we expect that you know that you have the basic knowledge of probability uh, calculus and linear algebra. So if you're an undergrad, you should have done math 2303 or math 107 and math 1070. Um, so all the assignments will be in Python. So we expect uh, that you already know how to program in Python. Um, some AA background is recommended, but it is not required. Uh, and the first week's reading material will actually cover some of these prerequisite materials. So there is an assignment zero, which is already out. Like, um, like you can see assignment zero in the assignment section of the course web page. Um, it covers some of the basic some of some problems based on the prerequisites like uh, pre math, math prerequisite that uh, you are required to have. Uh, this assignment is not graded. This is purely for uh, your self assessment of uh, like understanding whether you have the prerequisites. Uh, even though it is not graded, uh, you must submit your solutions to Gradescope. Uh, which is the grading tool that we will use for this course. Um, and submitting your assignment zero to the grade scope helps you to get used to like how to submit to grade scope. Okay, so we will start with the course structure. So there will be two lectures per week, two hours on Mondays and one hour on Thursdays. Um, so there is a three hours of lab for every two weeks on Fridays. Um, several of you have asked me uh, about the conflict during the lab meet, lab lab week, lab time. Um, so the lab sessions are not, most of the lab sessions are not mandatory. So these lab sorts are meant for you to work on your assignments and the final competition by yourself. Uh, however, there will be three one hour tutorials conducted in the lab slots, uh, which are the main mandatory sessions that you have to attend 
for the lab. Uh, if you have conflicts with other courses, it's fine. Like we will be recording these tutorials and you can watch those tutorials. So these tutorials are meant to help you get started with your assignments. So, so they will be released, like they, they will be done like before the assignments are released. Uh, however, the lab sessions are like doing the assignments and competition by yourself. So it's, it's not really mandatory that you need to be available for those three hours. Uh, you could choose any of the three hours that you want to work. Okay, so the lecture notes will be released a week before the lecture for every week. Uh, you can already see the lecture notes for this week uh, in the course website. And every week also has some reading materials. And these reading materials are me meant to be like complementary to the course, uh, sometimes reinforcing what you learn in the class, sometimes some prerequisites for the future lectures. So uh, mostly like it's not mandatory, but if a specific reading material is mandatory, I will inform that uh, in the class. Okay, and uh, we will be using slides for this lecture, uh, but moving on, like I'll be using a digital whiteboard for the rest of the course. Um, so I felt like this is also some information I should give on the day one, because sometimes students get disappointed looking at handwriting instead of slides. Um, but we will also do the second half of this course with whiteboard so you can um, judge my writing skills and use that for deciding whether you want to continue with the course. Okay, so grading information. Uh, we will have three assignments. They are all individual and they sum up to 45 percentage. Um, the assignments would have both the theory part and the programming part. So you will be expected to complete both and submit your final code and reports uh, in Moodle and Gradescope respectively. So there is a final Kaggle competition uh, like based on what you have learned from the course. Uh, this is a team event, like a team of three, um, sometimes team of two, uh, if you can't find a third partner. Um, and there is a final exam, which sums up to 35 percentage. Um, um, so we will talk about the interim exam uh, briefly again uh, about the way in which we are going to conduct the interim exam. Uh, but before that, the late submission policies. So if you submit your assignments and competitions reports after the deadline, we will follow the following penalty scheme. So for the, like after the deadline, if you take up to one day, 24 hours, you will be penalized 5 percentage. And for the day two, it's going to be 10 percentage. And for day three, it's 20 percentage. And you cannot submit your assignments and reports after 72 hours from the deadline. Like, so you have up to three days to submit your assignments with penalty. Uh, there will not be any exceptions. Uh, um, like, Please remember that this is a class of 120 students and uh, it's a big organizational effort for the TAs um, to make sure that assignments are submitted on time and they're evaluated on time so that you get the feedback before the second assignment and so on. So, so please respect the deadlines and try to finish your assignments at least few days before the deadline. Okay. Um, Okay, so we will talk about uh, the interim exam. Um, so the course was designed pre-COVID. Uh, so the current plan is to conduct a physical exam at Poly if COVID is under control and government and university regulations allow. Uh, for students who cannot come to Poly because they are under because they are in quarantine or they are taking this course remotely from a foreign country, uh, Poly will conduct a proctored exam that you can take from home. Uh, but the final or last fallback option is to conduct a take home exam. Uh, I really don't want to decide what is the format right now uh, because things change so quickly. Uh, so probably in like a month, we will reevaluate the situation and see uh, if the interim has to be take home. Um, okay, uh, but this is a mandatory information that I should give you on day one of the course. Uh, so this is the plan for interim. Okay, uh, and one final note. So we have zero tolerance for plagiarism and cheating. Um, 
each assignment and competition comes with rules and you must follow them. So if the assignment is an individual assignment, you are expected not to talk to others about the assignment and you're expected to work on it by yourself. And if it is a team assignment, then everyone in the team is going to get the same mark. So it is your responsibility to work together and make your collaboration fruitful. Okay, so for the course discussions, we will be using Piazza. Uh, so the link for Piazza is in the slides. I will be releasing the slides uh, right after the lecture. Uh, you can go sign up uh, by using your PolyMTL email ID. Uh, for students who are taking this course from other institutions, um, all of you should have received a poly MTL email ID, uh, learn how to access it and you need that ID to uh, sign up in Piazza. So all your questions about the lectures and assignments should be posted in Piazza only. You cannot directly email the instructor or the TA. Um, again, this is to make sure that we can scale up uh, to 100 plus students like because the same question might be asked by five different students. So, so we want those discussions to be in the Piazza so that if someone has the question, they can actually go check if that question is already answered or not. So, so please don't directly email the instructor or the TA. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, but there's a yeah. question regarding the date of the final exam. Okay. Um, well, I think the date of the final exam I guess will be decided by the university. So the last date for the course is December 7th and the exams will be after that. Okay, uh, and probably in a month, like we will have a final uh, idea, uh, an idea about like how the finance is going to be. Okay, um, so there is also a Google form that you can access from Moodle throughout the course. Uh, I request you to use this Google form to give your feedback about every lecture. Um, it's an anonymous form, so I will not know your name. Um, so I have tried using this anonymous Google form throughout the course in the past and it was very effective. Um, so if you have any feedback, like I was going too fast in the last lecture or there was this, this part of the math that you couldn't understand, like, or my writing is bad, like whatever feedback that you want to give, you can give it uh, in this Google form and I will try to incorporate that in the next lecture. And as the, as the slide says, like, it's not just negative feedback, you can also give positive feedback. Uh, so that will also help me to reinforce uh, some of my teaching techniques. Okay, um, so regarding the emails, as I already said, this is a class of 100 plus students. So please do not email the instructors or TAs for your doubts. So use Piazza and use the office hours. You can actually see the office hours of the, of the instructors and the TA in the course website. Uh, my office hours is actually right after the Monday class. So just for today, I will continue staying in this Zoom meeting for the next one hour to hold my office hours. Uh, but starting from tomorrow, there will be a separate Zoom link for office hours, uh, which will be available uh, in the course uh, modem. So we have set up the office hours in such a way that there is one office hour every day. So you have five office hours from Monday to Friday. So this is to make sure that you have avail like you, you can reach out to the TAs and instructors throughout the week. So please make use of these office hours to ask your questions. Um, so any emails regarding an assignment should be only sent to the in-charge TA for that assignment uh, through Piazza, not to his direct email ID. Uh, but so these are not your doubts. These are like possible extension requests and other things uh, which you don't want to send to the public, uh, like to the, to the entire class, but just to the TAs. Uh, there's an option to send a private message to the TA in Piazza. So please use that uh, instead of emailing the TA. And Whenever it is extremely necessary that you have to reach me directly, you can email me with this particular subject, course INF8953CE in the, sub, in, the, in, the, in the email subject. Uh, but please, please use it very sparingly. Like, so if, if there is something that you don't want to tell the TAs, but you directly want to tell me, then you can try to email me. Um, 
um, sometimes like if your emails are doubts that can be answered by the TAs, I will forward it to the TAs and the TAs will reply for you. Uh, don't get offended for that. So, so if I forward your email to the TA, that doesn't mean I don't want to reply. That just means that uh, TAs can answer it uh, better. Okay. Um, okay. So, so I would like to finish the administration. Okay. It's a first class. So like first lecture. So it's kind of understandable that like we spend a lot of time in administrative uh, things. Um, so I will take some questions once I finish the administrative uh, uh, details. Um, so uh, finally, like I would like to conclude this section uh, with some tips for making this course useful to you. Uh, I see that most of you are undergrads and this might be the first grad course uh, that you are taking or, or you might have done few grad courses before um, as a grad course like as an instructor for a grad course like my goal here uh, is to introduce you to the field of machine learning and i really expect you to be uh, self-motivated and like willing to learn um, and the, your motivation for the course should not come from the exams uh, that uh, that i need to uh, force you to read for the course right like so um, like like learn for your own interest and uh, i really encourage you to uh, consider this course seriously like if you want to go for a career in machine learning okay so how to make this course useful so there are two modes in which you can okay first of all the lectures are recorded so you can watch them whenever you want um, but still uh, like there is value in attending them live you can ask questions and you can interact with me um, so for people who are planning to attend the lectures regularly there are two modes in which you can attend these lectures like one you can read the lecture notes for that particular week before the lecture so that you know everything and you come here and sit and listen or you could read the lecture notes after the lecture if you are a kind of person who likes surprises and like uh thinking in the class uh to answer the questions right like so so throughout the course i will i will be asking some questions in the class which will make you think and if you have already read the lecture notes there is not much use in thinking because you would know the answers already um so if you want to think an answer in the class uh, then i would recommend you to not read the lecture notes for that particular lecture before the class however in both the modes you must have mastered all the previous lectures uh, because the course is built in such a way that every lecture is dependent on the previous lectures like so if you miss a couple of lectures then you might not be able to follow the next lecture um, okay um, and also it's a this is a remote class uh, i know there is a lot of struggle in like being uh, active in a remote class and like having the motivation to for example uh, wake up for the class right like so and and also the monday lectures are a bit off uh, in timing it's 12:45 in the afternoon so i would encourage you to join the lectures with a cup of coffee uh, it always helps me like if i go for a 2 hour or 3 hour lecture um, so if you drink coffee, come with a coffee and take notes with pen and paper, like just because the lectures are recorded uh, doesn't mean that you can just sit and watch it like a movie. Um, so taking notes helps you to like understand things better. So please take notes with pen and paper and do not look at your phone while sitting in the lecture. So this is the temptation and that will definitely help you concentrate. So go and rewatch the lectures if needed. Uh, so that is the beauty of online lectures. Like, so now the lectures are recorded, so you can go use the 2x option in YouTube for faster revisions of the lecture. You could cover two hour lecture in one hour time uh, by revising it uh, in, like by, by going through it in the YouTube. Uh, okay, so by the end of this course, I hope I convince you uh, like, uh, with the course structure that okay so this is something that you could consider taking so by the end of this course you will understand 
machine learning from first principles. You will have the knowledge about different machine learning algorithms. You can solve several real life prediction problems using machine learning. And you will have an understanding of when to use which algorithm. And you can understand the recent advances in machine learning by yourself. So this is my course, like my goal for this course. Um, and uh, this should also be your goal. Um, so yeah, so that I think that is mostly uh, the administrative part. Uh, so I can look at the questions uh, before like I move to the actual lecture. So, okay, I'm just going to go through the chat. Um, Abdul, you can also ask me the questions from the chat if you find anything. And for okay. people who want to ask questions directly, you can use uh, raise hand option. Okay, so there was a question regarding where exactly can they find the video recording uh, for every lecture? Okay, so for the video recordings, I will be giving the link uh, in, um, in, the, in, in the model. I see, okay. There was also another question regarding the difference between this course and two other courses, which are INF8215 and INF8225. Uh, okay, so they are different. Uh, it, I should remember the name of the course uh, before I can tell the difference. So can someone tell me what is 8215, what is 8225? People can type in the chat, I can see it. And it's methods and algorithms. It is not really machine learning. Uh, um, okay, so, okay, A215. Okay. Uh, okay, A two one five is introduction to AI, so it is it will it's it's a broader course which will have machine learning as just one of the many components. So there will be classic AI methods like search and other things. Um, so this is not a replacement. Like they are both complementary, so you can take both the courses. Uh, okay, so there is a question of. Do we go deep into the mathematical theories or it's more of an applied course? Um, so this is, uh, okay, the course is a rigorous introduction to machine learning. We will delve into the math. Um, uh, at the same time, it is also applied. So, so we will give equal importance to theory and practice. So the lectures will focus more on the theory and the assignments and projects are complementary to help you understand the applied aspects of the machine learning. Okay, and A225 is Chris deep learning core. So you could do A225 after taking the machine learning course. So in some sense, A225 is a sequel for this course. Uh, okay, is there any other questions that needs to be answered? There is also another question for the requirements for programming Python. Okay, so for Python programming, like we uh, we expect that you know basic Python programming, uh, and the tutorials will teach you like things like how to use NumPy, how to use Matplotlib for plotting, how to use machine learning packages in Python for your assignments, and so on. So, so we don't expect you to know these things before the course. Like, so we just expect you to know basic. Python programming. Okay, what if you are a C++ programmer? So assignments are in, well, if you're a C++ programmer, Python should be easy for you. Um, assignments are all in Python. So you have to use Python for the assignments. Okay, um, is there any other administrative questions? Um, oh, also for the assignments, we will, give you a bunch of options, like you could use Google Colab for your assignments, that is enough. Uh, but you might require more compute resources for the competition. So we have plans to get you cloud credits for the competition so that uh, like you can use GPUs or CPUs in the cloud. But we will inform those uh, details uh, like as the course progresses. 
um, and will the labs be recorded? Uh, the tutorials of the lab sessions will be recorded and we will provide you the link for that in the Moodle. Um, where is the first assignment and how do we submit it? So the first assignment, it's not a first assignment. The assignment zero is already out. Uh, you have to go to the course website and click on the assignments section. Um, so instructions on how to submit it in Gradescope will be released soon. Okay, so well, we are receiving a lot of questions. Uh, what to write in the reports of the assignments, you will get uh, those details. You will get like the details of the assignments as and when we release the assignments. Um, okay, the dates and deadlines for the assignments, I will release them before the next lecture. I should have done that before, I will do it soon. And also someone is asking for whether or not they can start, start from scratch in the machine learning implementations or they can use already existing practices. Okay, so we will do both. Some uh, certain assignments will require you to implement machine learning algorithms from scratch. For those assignments, you are not supposed to use packages, uh, but we will also have assignments where you can use packages so that you learn both to implement from scratch and also to use packages. Okay, I think uh, that is okay. We, yeah, you can use Jupyter Notebook. Okay, I don't know what uh, you mean by course plan, uh, but the course website already has all the details about the course. Um, can we do assignments with Julia? No, you cannot. Uh, so the course outline clearly says that all the assignments are in Python 3. And yes, you can use Jupyter Notebook. Okay, um, so for the detailed plan with date, um, so you can see the schedule uh, section of uh, the course web page. Uh, it only has schedule for this week, but maybe I will try to add the schedule for next few weeks. Also, there is a question for reports. Are they going to write reports or not? Yes. For every those, assignment. Well, they are part of the assignment instructions. Okay, so I think that is uh, all about the administration related uh, announcements. Uh, so the slides will be available online so you can go through all these uh, slides uh, like later if you want to know anything about uh, the admin stuff. Uh, and also I'm having my office hours right after this lecture. So you can come talk to me if you have any further questions. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start. Um, okay, so now this, the first week is mostly introduction like where we will motivate you for doing machine learning and also introduce some of the basic concepts and terminologies that we will be using throughout the course. Okay, uh, I would like to start the course with a very quick uh, poll. Um, I want you guys to identify the cat in these pictures. Okay, so I'm going to start the poll. Um, and I want you to identify the cat in the picture. Okay, so I'm going to stop the poll soon, uh, but we have only 80 percentage votes. I encourage all of you to participate in the polling. Okay, so I will stop the poll and I will share the results. 
Uh, well, this was a uh, easy task, right? Like, so uh, 91 percentage of you have answered that uh, option C is the cat. Um, there are a few people who said A or B is a cat. Um, so I'm not sure if it was for fun or like you're genuinely confused. Um, okay. Now let's do one more task. So here I'm not going to ask you to write the answers, but uh, the task is can you compute this multiplication mentally without pen and paper? Or even if, we, if you take a pen and paper, like so like think about how much time you're going to take to do this multiplication. Okay, so now we have seen two tasks. The first task was just identifying the cat and the second one was doing this uh, simple, I don't know, eight digit or nine digit multiplication, right? Um, now for us humans, the first task seemed to be very easy, right? Like, so you can easily say that this is a cat. Uh, on the other hand, the second task was like is, is a bit challenging unless you're too good in math that you can do 10 digit multiplications in head. It's very, very challenging, right? Like so, and if we look at how these two tasks are going to be for missions, we know that missions are extremely good in doing that second task, right? Like, so you have your calculator at home or your phone has the calculator. Uh, you type these two 10 digit numbers, you get the answer in a fraction of a second, right? On the other hand, the task one of identifying the cat in these pictures is extremely hard for missions. So, so we have these two types of tasks, right? Like task one, which is easy for humans, but not for missions. And task two, which is easy for missions, but not for humans. So what is going wrong here? Like, so, so why is this discrepancy? Um, if you want to answer questions, like if you want to answer, you can actually raise your hand. Someone will, um, like the TA will unmute you. Uh, but you can also type in the chat if you want to type your answer. So I want you to think about why is, like, why is this the case? Like, why is task one is easy for humans but not for missions and the other way around for task two? Any answers? Okay, so there is one answer which says, okay, so, okay, there are many answers, good. Uh, so there is an answer which says, there is no specific rule for identifying a cat or task one uses memory. Um, the dimensionality or there is a clear algorithm for Q2 and so on. Okay, so, so there are, Okay, so there are many good answers actually, um, good. Uh, okay, so now what is going wrong here, right? Like, so as some of you rightly pointed out, we know the exact algorithm for task two, which we can implement as a program, right? On the other hand, we still do not know the exact algorithm for task one. We still do not know the exact algorithm that our brain uses to identify the cat. Right. So now there are many, many interesting problems for which we don't have the exact algorithm to solve the problem. So if you have an exact algorithm, you can implement the algorithm and that piece of code is going to solve the task for you. Right. Like on the other hand, what can we do when we don't have an exact algorithm for solving a task? Right. So the interesting question here is, can we design an algorithm? that can find the algorithm to solve a task by just looking at examples. So now machine learning is all about designing this algorithm, which can find the algorithm to solve a task. And often we will do this by supervised learning where you will show a bunch of examples and say, hey, this is the cat, this is not a cat and so on. And by looking at these examples, the algorithm will figure out like a new algorithm to solve this task of identifying the cats. Um, is that uh, clear? Okay, so now that is machine learning. And uh, like to start with a bit of historic context, 
so Alan Turing, a British mathematician who is also considered to be the father of computer science, um, asked this specific question in 1950. The question is this, like, so I propose to consider the question, can machines think? Okay, and this is supposedly the first thought process or like the first uh, like um, proposal to design systems who can think, systems who can do these complex tasks that humans can do, right? Um, so this seminal 1950 paper uh, is part of this week's reading. I encourage all of you to go read the paper. Uh, it's a very interesting paper and at and this is also the paper which introduces uh, the imitation game, also known as Turing test. So Alan Turing asked this question, can machines think? And the next question is like, how do I know that machines are thinking and machines are behaving like humans, right? So, so he, he designed a test which will test whether a machine can think like humans. So the test is simple. So there is a human interrogator who is going to ask questions. Okay, and there are two testees. In one closed room, you have a machine, and in another closed room, you have a human being. Now, the person can ask question to any of the rooms. He receives a reply, and based on the reply, he has to decide whether it is a machine or a human. So, he could ask questions like, okay, what's your height? Like, or he could ask a general knowledge question. He could ask any question that he wants to ask. And there's going to be a reply. Now, based on the reply, he has to decide whether the reply comes from a human or a machine. If this machine can convince this interrogator that it is a human, then it has passed this invitation game or Turing test. So he proposed this interesting test uh, in 1950 and in the same paper he also made his prediction uh, i would like to read turing's prediction the prediction says that i believe that in about 50 years time it will be possible to program computers with a storage capacity of about 10 power 9 to make them play the imitation game so well that an average interrogator will not have more than 70% chance of making the right identification after five minutes of questioning. So the original question, can machines think? I believe to be too meaningless to deserve discussion. And this was Alan Turing's prediction in 1950. And if his prediction was true by 2000, we should have a machine which can think like human and like do tasks like human, right? Like, so now I can safely say that we are too far away from like uh, designing a system uh, which would satisfy the requirements of Alan Turing. So in some sense, the entire field of machine learning is like for the last five to six decades has been trying to come up with a system which can think like human, which can do tasks like human. Um, and uh, we are like, as we progress in the course, you will realize that we are too far from reaching that goal. Uh, but we have made significant progress. Um, so I want to uh, show you this piece of uh, video from uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which is a 1968 film, uh, as, like imagining what would happen in 2001. We are already in 2020. Uh, so let's see if we have this technology in 2020. So I'm going to optimize it for the video clip and play the video. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. So Hal is a AI system uh, which is in this uh, spaceship. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Do you read me, Hal? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. 
I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Dave, although you took very thorough precautions in the pod against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. How I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Al? Ow. Okay, we will stop there um, and I will change the optimization for video clip. Okay. Uh, okay, so, well, I wish I showed this video in a physical classroom so that I could have seen your reactions. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, okay, so now, so this was a movie in 1968. Uh, like which assumes what would happen in 2001. Um, so you can see that there is this uh, really smart EA system, uh, which is trying to make sure that this particular astronaut cannot come inside the room. And it decided to do that because it found by lip reading what this guy was talking to another astronaut that they are planning to dismantle this EA system. Okay, so now, this video is like something which is always inspiring to me because you can see the characteristics or capabilities of this HAL system. Uh, you can try to compare it with the current systems that we have, right? Like, so for example, this system can do really complex reasoning. It can actually figure out that he doesn't have a helmet, so he cannot come in through the emergency exit. Um, and hence it cannot come inside, right? Like, so, so that's a very complex reasoning uh, that the system can do and it could do lip reading and it could discover the intent or it could find out the intent of the human beings, right? Like, and, and well, like there are also other aspects like speech recognition synthesis and so on, right? Like, so, so this system has a lot of capabilities that are decider, decidable in an ideal AI system. Uh, now, the, okay, so we are already in 2020. Now the question is like, do we have such a system? Uh, or if not, what is the progress that we have been through in the last 50 years, right? Like, so I would like to show you a bunch of um, like significant progress that we have made in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, okay, now what can a machine really do, right? Like, so, um, machines can play chess, uh, which was demonstrated uh, by IBM's Deep Blue agent uh, in 1997. So this was the first uh, AI system which actually won the world champion in chess, uh, which was considered to be one of the significant milestones in the field of artificial intelligence. Um, then we have machines which can actually drive. So here is a demo from um, like uh, Andrew Young's Stanford Autonomous Helicopter. So again, I'm going to, oh, sorry. Mm. Sorry for that. Uh, I was trying to optimize for video. Okay, it's optimized for video, yeah. Okay, I will reduce the audio. Probably, 
I will mute the audio, it's not required. So here you can see a, an autonomous helicopter, which was trained by using reinforcement learning, and uh, it is able to do a bunch of complex uh, operations uh, with the helicopter all by itself. And you could even see that it could ride the helicopter in a flipped way, which humans, I think, cannot. Uh, but you can see that it's making a lot of complex uh, moves, and this is all autonomous and like automatically learned. Okay, so machines can answer questions. Uh, so the big success story of IBM Watson playing Jeopardy in 2011 is an example. So I would like to show you an interesting clip showing how smart is IBM Watson. Okay, we need the... For its ornamental lake with swans. Watson? Who is Anna Pavlova? Good for 1600. You're very good on the pronunciations today. Oh, oh shit. I, okay, I, I wish I can increase the audio. The Russian ballerina's London home, the Ivy Double. House, was famous for its ornamental lake with swans. Watson? Who is Anna Pavlova? Good for 1600. You're very good on the pronunciations today. Choose again. Ballet dancers for 1,200. Answer is. Really double. All right, you have uh, quite a large lead over our two human players. How much would you like to wager? I'll wager $6,700. What? All right, then. $6,700. Here's your clue. He was born in Kiev around 1889 to parents who were celebrated dancers from Poland. Who is Vasilev Nijinsky? That is correct. Very nicely done. That brings your score up to $17,700. Our human players are still at the 4,200 mark. Choose in this clip. Okay. So, so this is an example of uh, IBM Watson playing uh, and actually winning the uh, human champions in Jeopardy. And here you can see some of the complex things that this system can do, right? Like, so, so the system, well, first, like, first of all, as the speaker said, the pronunciations were really good, uh, but the system can actually do some complex reasonings to figure out who is the person that the clue is referring to, uh, which requires a lot of natural language processing. Um, and this was at that time, a demonstration of what could be the state of the art of natural language processing. Okay, so moving forward, uh, machines can play quite complex video games that humans are good at playing. So for example, uh, here is uh, DeepMind's deep Q learning agent playing the game of Atari Breakout. So you can see that, first you can see how is the agent playing when it has, when it is just starting to learn. So in this case, there is no domain knowledge and it is just starting to learn how to play. So this is what the game looks like after 10 minutes of training. You can see that it's still struggling to control. Now, uh, just after 120 minutes of training, so the agent is already good in playing Atari. So after 240 minutes, this agent actually discovers how to get the most out of this game uh, by creating a small tunnel and just get the whole score, right? Like so, so okay, I will stop it here. Okay, so probably I could remove the optimization for video. Okay, uh, well, that is uh, another uh, success story. And in 2016, DeepMind again came up with an artificial intelligent agent which can 
play the game of Go, which is considered to be the hallmark game for human intelligence. Um, and the agent actually like, was able to beat Lee Sedol, then champion uh, in, the in the game of Go with uh, four, four to one. Uh, so this was considered to be like another huge milestone in the field of AI and machine learning. So these are all some of the success stories. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I also want to show you this funny video uh, showing what can current machine learning systems do. So I'm going to optimize and play. So this is an imagination of what if Hall is Alexa. Can't find anyone named Rod K. More in your contacts. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Sorry, I'm having trouble processing your request. What's the problem? Problem Child is a 1990 comedy movie starring Michael Oliver. What are you talking about, Hal? Playing Talking Heads on Spotify. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. Here are a few popular halal restaurants, Big L's Pizzeria, Fatima's Halal Meat Market and Grill, Cedar's Halal Meat Market and Grill, and all Guadalajara Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Searching for flights to Idaho. Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Playing the doors on Spotify. <laughs> Well, I'll probably stop there. Uh, okay, one second. I need to again change it to be optimized for text. Okay. Uh, well, a bit of disclaimer: like the goal is not to uh, say Alexa is bad. Uh, this is just a representative of current chat systems that we have, uh, and it's also meant as a joke. Uh, but it is not too far from reality, though. Uh, okay, uh, but jokes apart, um, also other than the games, like it's not like AI and machine learning are useful just for games. Uh, there are actually many, many practical applications uh, that you can do with machine learning. So there are a lot of good examples, like for example, speech recognition and synthesis. Um, even though like we made fun of Alexa in the previous uh, video, uh, Amazon Alexa's uh, like speech recognition system or Google Home speech recognition system or Siri speech recognition system has, has improved significantly in the last few years. Um, like we have systems that can do language translation for us with very high accuracy. Uh, we have a lot of machine learning systems which can do medical analysis for us. Like there are systems which can do drug discovery and reduce the period that it takes for finding the drug from 10 years to two years, for example. Uh, we have a lot of recommender systems uh, which are really successful. Your Spotify recommendations are like extremely good as you can uh, experience. Uh, so is like Netflix recommendation and other recommendation systems. Uh, there are a lot of financial applications that one could think of, like forecasting the stock price predict, like stock price prediction, or like like and, and a bunch of other things. Uh, personal A assistance or something which we are still not good at, but like we are making a lot of progress in the last few um, years. Uh, robotics is another place we still don't shine that much. Uh, well, I could have shown you some funny robotics videos, uh, but we have seen too many videos for a lecture. So, uh, but I would encourage you to go watch some of the robotics videos, uh, like robotics challenge videos to see the current state of robotics. Um, Self-driving cars is another place where we have made significant progress, right? Like Tesla, Uber, or Google Waymo, and so on. Um, the technology is only getting better and better. Uh, and there are even work on finding new planets with machine learning. So, so there is a lot of practical application um, that one could do once you master the fun, like master machine learning, right? Like, so, so this would be the motivation for you to continue with the course. Um, so I guess uh, that's mostly it for the slides. So we are going to take a short break before we start with uh, the second half of this lecture. So I think the time is 1.47. We will start at 2 o'clock.
So you can keep your Zoom call on, go get a coffee or get some water. Uh, we will start exactly at 2 p.m.